guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing this garden come together. This was one that I have been waiting to do for a really long time. I've wanted to do one with more of a formal flair, but I just didn't have like the right container or the pieces. I didn't really have a clear vision for it. And then I thought it would be really fun to kind of mirror a couple of the pieces after our own home. Um, so I just wanted to talk through this project because sometimes we do these and just do a fast version and there's really no explanation. And I just wanted to talk through the plant choice, the container and all the pieces. So let me start with the first thing and that is the container. This is a metal container that was custom built by somebody local um, and I got it at the garden center. We only had a couple of them so I do not have a source for this, I'm really sorry, but it made for the perfect structure I think for this garden, having very clean lines and that square shape. I usually do containers like this in round. So that was really fun. Um, and then I put some of the Espoma organic potting mix in there and that's kind of what I start with when I do a mixed planter like this. There are a couple of different water requirements but I'll go over how I water this later um, based on the plants that I have. And then I started with the common junipers in the back. So I got these also down at the garden center. We got in a load of really pretty miniature evergreens. Now these are not miniature forever. They will grow into bigger shrubs. This is not a permanent garden, um, but I thought that the vertical element, like that strong balanced structure in the back would be a really good thing to start with. And then my next layer down, I put a U in here spelled Y-E-W. And I liked the texture on this one. It has like little um, flowers. I don't know if that's what they are, but they like I'm getting some kind of dusty pollen kind of off of them. Uh, but I just think that's a really pretty evergreen there. Then of course I've got a couple of hellebores, which I cannot remember the name of, but we'll um, flash them up on the screen. I did say the tags, I just don't know where I put them. This one is beautiful dark colored flower with dark colored foliage. And then this one's got the real ruffly pink, which I think is really pretty. And I wanted to not necessarily do everything balanced, but just do a stair step in general down on each side. So the rest of them on this side, I have a little daylily start, uh, which of course you guys know, daylily perennials, they do get quite large in the landscape. Um, and then we've got a fern here, a little viola, which I thought these two colors were just perfect together. And then a couple of red lettuce starts right here out of a four pack. I wanted something red, I wanted something small, and that worked for now. Um, and then bouncing over onto this side, I've got another Viola, the red color. I've got a Diacea here, which will bloom kind of an orangey color. And then a Creeping Charlie. If that's wrong, I'll put, we'll put it up on the screen. Um, but I really liked the um, structure of those leaves, like the shape of them. And then the fact that it has a little bit of white in it. And then the other two, um, the red lettuce starts out of that four pack. Um, so that was kind of the main planting. And then right around this center area, um, I put in some Irish moss, which I had one four inch can, and I just took it out of the can and cut it with scissors. <laughs> so all of these pieces have roots attached to them, but I just kind of cut the whole plant up and I'm using it kind of like a hedge of sorts. I just needed something really clean and structured there. And then I've got a variety of sedum right here. And those were just in little plugs um, that I had in our greenhouse. So I thought that that would make a really sweet little hedge kind of mirroring the um, Irish moss. So talking about plants and the fact that these all want to get bigger, they will stay in this kind of size for a little while. Of course, it's spring. Um, they're just kind of coming alive for the year right now, not putting on a ton of growth probably until summer. And when you put plants in restricted areas, they don't grow quite as quickly. So you can get a little bit longer out of them in a situation like this, as opposed to in the landscape, they'll probably grow a little bit faster because they have a lot more room. Uh, but I don't plan on keeping this together forever. This is meant to be an inspirational piece. It was meant to be um, something fun to put together. In fact, I think we might take it down to the garden center and display it down there for the spring just to give you know anybody who's walking through there, hopefully give them a little shot of inspiration or maybe some ideas um, of what they could maybe even do in their own garden or for a miniature garden like this. And now for the pieces that I used. So I got a few of these off of myfairygardens.com. A couple are from Jeremy Corp. Um, and then, boy, I, th I think I know where they all come from. This one came from myfairygardens.com. I love the shape of this house. I don't know if you would call it colonial, but it just looked like it would support a uh, formal type garden. And then right below it, we have a couple of topiary evergreens. Uh, and then we have a statue of Diana, which I was actually kind of hoping she was gonna be a little smaller 
because I wanted to put her right in the middle of this brick circle to kind of emulate what we have going on in Versailles with our Persephone statue, but she was a little too tall. So I wanted to tuck her in um, and just bring a little life to this corner here. Then I had two of these white benches on hand, actually. I had these up in my, I have like a box of fairy garden stuff um, upstairs and I kind of plowed through that to see what, what I had. And these I think are from Jeremy Corp, as is this pot right here, which is on a stake, which is nice. It keeps the um, pot in place. And I did put a Semper Vivum. I actually stole this off of my topiary bunny uh, and just kind of potted it up in that pot for now. And then the fence sections, which are all individuals here and the little gate with the pillars, those came from my fairy gardens as well. So the little brick area in the middle, I used Shapecrete, which you guys have probably, those of you who've watched our fairy gardens before, I've used Shapecrete quite a bit. Um, and I use photo paper to make my barriers in the soil because photo paper has a really glossy side to it. So after the Shapecrete has set up and dried a little bit, it peeled, that paper peels away really easy without like wrecking what I've done in the garden or like sticking, you know, sticking to the paper. Um, and so I just created a little, uh, like shape with the photo paper and then I mix up the shape crete which is one part water to one part shape crete just about um, I, I add a little bit of extra shape crete in there and make it a little thicker and I pour that on the interior of the mold and then I um, push those little bricks down and I got those bricks from um, myfairygardens.com uh, and so that was really fun I used a pair of wire snips which I don't have right around me but the wire cutters cut those bricks in half for the areas where I needed smaller bricks. But it's kind of nice because I tried doing this brick path, like I took the bricks out a while ago and just laid them on some soil in another pot just to see how they would sit. And they don't wanna sit very straight or um, they don't stay put, especially when you water. So I knew I needed to create some kind of base to stick those bricks in where they would stay put. And I think that this will work. Um, and I think that covers pretty much all the pieces I have in here. Um, so watering for something like this, I like to either use for this, I probably won't use a large syringe except for maybe on this one right here, uh, just because there's quite a number of things to water. I do like to use my copper watering can uh, from Gardener Supply because it has a really little opening and it's really controlled when you water things. You can control where that water goes and it doesn't come gushing out like it will on some of your bigger water cans. So I'll water all of these plants like from the side and from the back. And you can kind of control, you know, you don't give your junipers maybe quite as much water as you would give your lettuce. Um, same with the Irish moss. I'll just come in here and water the Irish moss and the sedum kind of separately. I mean, they are all sharing the same soil reservoir, but you can kind of control it a little bit. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and just hearing a little bit more about it. I will be using these plants elsewhere in my garden when this like when I decide to take it all apart, which, you know, I might leave it together, see how long we can get out of it and give you some updates. Um, I will probably have to pull the lettuce out first, uh, but you can kind of pull things out and space things out if you need to or add other things. And that's kind of the fun of it for me. And the last thing I want to talk about is cost. That's something that we don't often address with projects like this or for some of our other projects. I feel like it's so subjective. It depends on your area. Like there's some areas I hear that hellebores cost like above $30 which is crazy to me. Hellebore is like the most expensive one I have ever bought. It's probably like in the $25 range and most of them are like in the lower teens for me. So I feel like it's so different. It also depends on scale, um, how big you're doing your garden, you know, what kind of elements you wanna add in. And we all do things differently. We all have different tastes. And also a lot of these projects I put together, I'm hoping are inspiration to you. So I kind of go a little bit, like a lot of it, over the top because I'm hoping at least one thing will be interesting to you and you'll gather that little like nugget from whatever the project is and be like, I'm gonna do that someday, like in my own garden in like big size or I'll you know apply it to a fairy garden like this one. So yeah, if you were to try to add up everything in this garden, it would be crazy expensive, but I have been gathering stuff in this garden for over two years and I do like to utilize a lot of my stuff multiple times. Like some of you guys may, if you follow me on Instagram, have seen the picture of a holiday centerpiece I did in this container. I'll probably use this container for multiple other projects going forward. And I always utilize my plants again as well, if they're perennial. So like all this stuff in the here that's perennial, like everything will be utilized again, except for the lettuce. Um, so, you know, I feel like 
it's kind of sustainable because I can continually use stuff. And I use a lot of pieces too, fairy garden pieces over and over. And I didn't pay for everything that came in this garden. So I thought maybe it'd be interesting to kind of talk about some of the things that were sent to us because from time to time, companies do send us things um, to maybe use in a project if we you know, find a, find a use for it. Like Jeremy Korp sent out these benches and this little pot right here a couple of years ago. Um, MyFairyGardens.com, all the rest of the pieces are pretty much from them, which we have worked with them in the past, but I actually paid for all of the um, pieces full price that are in this um, arrangement. The little rocks I bought at a pet store um, and I use these in our water garden. I had some leftover. So that's what I'm talking about. Like the Shapecrete, Shapecrete sent us out a bucket of their concrete mix like three years ago maybe. Maybe like right in the beginning. Erin's saying four years ago. I'm still using out of that same bucket. So I keep stuff around for a really, really long time. So anyway, I thought that might be kind of interesting to you guys to know. Oh, also, you know, my parents have a garden center, so I do get a pretty good discount on the plants. So if they're ones that haven't been sent over, like I think Chick Charm sent over these sedums last year, and then I just try to treat them as good as possible so that they will winter over if I haven't used them again. I try to winter everything over either inside or in the greenhouse so, uh, so I can use it again. So anyway, I think that's it for this video. Hope you found it interesting and I hope you are feeling inspired. We will see you in the next one. Bye.